Right, as a little follow-up to my um, my carnivore diet and spirituality video, I thought I'd address specifically the non-violence question or um, ahimsa, as um, ultra-spiritual people like to call it. So it's a very common thing among all sorts of people I've had sort of attacking me on YouTube and whatever, that the carnivore diet is a very, um, very violent thing. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to gloss over the, the, old, um, the old theories that uh, a, ve a vegetarian and vegan diet contributes to all the amount of animals that are made homeless and extinct and uh, chewed up in combine harvesters and poisoned and all that sort of thing. So I don't believe any diet is free of violence. But that's, that's been addressed many places before. Um, recently I was having a, a long email exchange with quite a well-known spiritual teacher and um, he's vegan and we were discussing this point well many points over and over again and you you can kind of send proof for some of them but the non-violence thing it, it, it seems to stick with people um, now this guy I respect him very much. He's a very cool guy. He's not your average attacking vegan. And we had a good um, intelligent discussion. But there's always a sticking point on this ahimsa, this non-violence thing. So I was going to um, improvise a video about this. And I had a little look at that, the final email that I wrote him. And to get some ideas. And I thought, do you know what? That came out really well, I think. It was one of those things that sort of flows out and, and I don't quite know where it came from. So I thought I'd actually read it out uh, to you, the, the, the last note that I sent him on email, which kind of covers this Ahimsa thing as far as I'm concerned with maybe a, a couple of new perspectives. So here we go. This is what I said to him. Right, we've been at each other, sending links and counter-arguments, and we're not going to get anywhere. You believe in your science and are very invested in a plant-based diet, and I believe not only that it's all an illusion, but that I've sent you a myriad of links that would debunk everything you say. So I thought I'd try this from a different angle. I'd like to explain my position on how I came to it. This, after all, is all we have any semblance of control over or responsibility for. You must remember that initial moment of awakening, that dazzling assurance never to be lost that we're all one, that the illusion of separation was gone for good. But how to tell people? Even the best minds, the best scientists, the most renowned scholars are all still laboring under the misapprehension that we are separate entities. All evidence points to it. And even those who are seeking and open to the concept seldom, if ever, grasp it. It's a frustrating position to be in, but those rare ones who pop through give us our rewards in spades as their suffering subsides. This is exactly how it is to be awakened to what's going on with diet dogma. Everyone thinks you're nuts, from the conventional five-a-day brainwash through the Ahimsa-influenced vegetarians to the most militant and aggressive of vegans. Almost the whole world thinks you've lost the plot. Eat only meat? Insane. I understand that you're very invested in veganism, and since you're polite and thoughtful, I have no problem with that. We carnivores are pretty chilled and don't aim to get the whole world eating like we do, unlike vegans. And we see that everyone has their own unique path. In fact, I'd probably still be writing books on plant-based diets myself if I hadn't had a really nasty disease to address. This knowledge is so buried, so entrenched in the many layers of misconceptions, both accidental and deliberate, that only the select few ever have the faith to try it out. Usually those who've tried every other diet under the sun. This isn't our first rodeo. Here's what I've come to believe with this meat awakening. One, meat is the human reset food. Eating it exclusively heals the gut and reverses disease like no other food. Two, those who stay healthy long-term on a plant-based diet do so despite it, not because of it. Three, meat-only diets cause the least death and suffering of any dietary choice. Four, death isn't evil. Suffering and cruelty is evil. Nature is cruel. We don't have to be. There's an edit and a qualification there. Evil is a human concept. Nature has no idea about that. Five, farming practices are often disgraceful. We all agree on that. 6. The only way to restore the ruined land, bring back homeless species and restore the soil is to reintroduce ruminant animals in massive numbers to the ecosystem. 7. Meat and saturated fat is the most efficient fuel for the body and brain, as Ayurveda states. 
a little note there for people who don't know Ayurveda is an ancient Indian science of self-healing the, the Vedic tradition where people um, people now you know in spiritual movements have taken Ayurveda on to be a vegetarian science it, it isn't at all eight the world is changing with many other cellular disruptors like EMFs and artificial light so we've lost our carbon deuterium privileges and need to be more strict with our diets than at any other time in history to stay healthy. 9. There is no ahimsa way of eating. Every food involves the death and suffering of another animal. All we can do is minimize that. 10. Plants in one form or another are the cause of most of the chronic disease in the world today. On a plant, on a, on a diet level, that is. <coughs> so, how sure am I? Sure enough to bet my life. Even more, sure enough to bet the lives of my kids. My carnivore kids of 10 and 3 are the healthiest kids around. My daughter is lean, fit, muscular, intelligent beyond belief, never, get, never gets the bugs going round, and blinds me with her humour, insight and wisdom. My youngest son is much the same, strong, hilarious and bursting with energy at 3 years old, despite no carbs and is blessed with wisdom and humour way beyond his years. They're a total delight and are stable in their emotions and moods, a total opposite to their classmates. Not so my now 28-year-old son. I mean, he's unbelievably intelligent, loving and wise, but bringing him up veggie has left him with several health issues to battle, despite now being lean and muscular. He was obese at 10 and had suffered digestive issues for years before being hospitalized in 2002 with an aneurysmal bone cyst that required three hideous operations to remove and a whole vertebra in his neck to save his... No, uh, sorry. <laughs> three hideous operations to remove a whole vertebra in his neck to save his mobility, which was replaced with titanium scaffolding, which he still carries to this day. What caused it? Plants in one form or another, whether it was the healthy times of rice, dal and veg, or his pizza and pasta years, it was all down to plants. In fact, several of his issues were worse on rice, dal and veg than he was on pizza. So let's address just one from the list above, Ahimsa. Imagine if you were as sure as I am about all the rest. Where does Ahimsa begin? Like everything else at home, am I going to subject my kids to even a remote chance of suffering like my firstborn did? Not a chance. Even though I agree with you about factory farming and by good quality humanely killed meat whenever I can, would I feed factory meat to my kids if there was no choice? Damn right I would. I've seen incredible healing on low quality meat and although I have tremendous respect for animals and deep gratitude and awareness when they become my food, I put humans first. These days there is a massive epidemic of unnecessary disease that the medical profession understand little about. Every day I get messages of thanks and tales of incredible healing. It's not rare to see me in tears at my computer as somebody else gets their life back. I've been there. I know the relief. And those diseases are worse than death. I've been so ill that I wished for death. A bolt gun to the head in those dark days would have been a blessing. But for the sake of my kids, I stayed around and in the end I won out. My version of Ahimsa is to dispel the bullshit that creates such a massive amount of suffering and painful slow death among my fellow humans. And that death and suffering is plant-based. I pray that one day we will sort out our greed and cruelty, understand that it's better for everyone on the planet to have ruminant animals, our natural source of nourishment, back on the grass, living happy lives, restoring the raped swathes of land and having a quick painless death. But this is not my area of passion and expertise. There are many other woke carnivores working quietly towards this with a balanced emotional attitude to greater effect than the raging vegans. And I applaud them. My expertise lies in the reversal of chronic disease and in that I'm very successful. We can only follow our passions. So that's where I am. I'm not an uncaring, slavering caveman. I'm totally and utterly dedicated to relieving as much suffering in my fellow man as I can. I always have been. But only since discovering 100% carnivory have, have I been able to truly offer people that option. We, so, can you really blame me? After all, it's only the universe eating itself, and this has been going on in our own backyards and the Serengeti alike for millennia. With love, etc., etc.